Hello kittens and welcome to my Romancethon vlog. So technically Romancethon starts on the 17th, which is Monday. However, uh I figured I'd start my vlog on a Sunday like I already do, always do, and if I have to finish my romance-a-thon a day early, so be it. So I have picked three books to cover the six prompts. Uh, the first prompt is A Forbidden Romance, and for this one I'm going to be picking Behind the Green Curtain. This wasn't actually on my month-long TBR, but it is a forbidden romance between an employee and her employer. Then we have a new adult. For this one, I'm choosing The Rebel of Rayleigh High. This is also another indie pick, and I'll be reading both of them on my Kindle. The Rebel of Rayleigh High is about a bullied teenager, or two outcast teenagers, I believe, getting it on and inflicting revenge on all of their high school bullies. I'm not sure I'm gonna agree with the book, but I really wanted to read it. It had a very interesting blurb. The third prompt is a book with pink on the cover, and for this one I picked Surprise Me, one of the few that I actually have physically. Uh, it looks, because it's a library book, it looks like someone's dropped this in the bath at some point. But this is my pick for pink on the cover. This is a book by Sophie Kinsella. It is about a couple who maybe have like been together a bit long and are starting to get bored and it's about how they try and regain the spark. For a book released in 2019, I'm also going for Rebel of Rayleigh Hall. For a man on the cover, that's also <laughs> Rebel of Rayleigh Hall. And then for an LGBTQ romance, that's actually Behind the Green Curtain. All right, so those are my three books for Romancathon. I also wanted to make sure that I picked up a few more books because we are taking a couple of days off this week to celebrate Midsummer. The first one is On Writing by Stephen King. This is one of the books that I'm trying to read 40 pages a day, I think, so I'll have it finished by Friday, and I've already reached page 80. This is a collection of kind of short stories almost, or paragraph stories really, about memories that Stephen King has of his life and how those built him up to be an author. And then I believe the second and chunkier part of the book is on actually writing and what it means to be a writer and how you write. I have been tabbing my quotes or annotating my quotes, um, but that's only because I want to write them on post-it notes and this is a library book, so I need to give it back. I can't just hang on to it forever. But yes, so I'm looking forward to having this finished. I really need to read this soon because the library has like a million people requesting it and it's never in stock. I might actually have to buy it if I really like it, but we'll wait and see. So uh, Stephen King's On Writing was also not part of my month-long TBR, so I'm getting a little bit worried that I might not fit all of the bingo balls in this month. So I'm also going to be picking up Daniel Key's Flowers for Algernon. Now I know this isn't a romance and I know this is going to make me cry, so I've been very hesitant to pick it up today, even though I definitely could have done. It's a very short book, it's about 220 pages I think, and it is... I know what the plot is and I'm so sad and I'm, I'm already like not not okay with this but I figured if I take it on holiday and we go to the sunny cabin and we like it rains or something then no one will know I'm crying finally as you all know I am planning a video on the bells so I really need to get my reading on I'm only on chapter three I think and I already have a ridiculous number of quotes and annotations that I want to bring up in my uh, in my video so I better get a shifty on with this one because this one is also due back in the library super soon <laughs> don't worry it's not going to be as explosive as my uh, Changing of the Guards review. I actually enjoyed the bells enough. <laughs> As you can clearly tell by the bookmark, I have already started Stephen King's on writing. I am enjoying it so far, although we've only just hit the bits about actually writing that aren't just, this is what I did as a kid. I think my favourite quote is, the most important thing is that the writer's original perception of a character or characters may be as erroneous as the reader's. Running a close second was the realisation that stopping a piece of work just because it's hard, either emotionally or imaginatively, is a bad idea. Sometimes you have to go on when you don't feel like it. And sometimes you're doing good work when it feels like all you're managing is to shovel sit shit from a sitting position. Now, I definitely am sure all authors feel like they are shoveling shit sometimes. I'm at the purpose point of this current book where I'm completely confused as to what I'm gonna be doing next. And this is just a nice reminder that I just have to reach the end of the first draft and then we can always edit the rest of it out from there. Uh, so on Monday, I have a party at work and on Tuesday, I have another party at work different works, so, or different workplaces. So I'm hoping to get some reading done, but we'll see. Like, the sky is blue, there are trees everywhere. There are probably some ducks, uh, if they haven't left the vicinity yet. And I am off to a party to play some Swedish Viking chess and uh, see some old friends. So I did read on the bus this morning there is a, there isn't a duck, but there is a moorhen. I don't know if you can see. Seriously, how idyllic is this place? All right, so I read on the bus this morning. I started my romance-a-thon off with the Rebel of Rayleigh High. 
So far it is incredibly intense. It definitely has trigger warnings for sexual assault and bullying um, and for child abuse. But I'm really loving the writing style. This author definitely has a way with words and it's making me feel a lot more comfortable uh, with my choices to read it, to be honest. I was a bit worried that the bullying and that the revenge of the bullying would be a bit more carry than, I don't know, than get your own success in life. But this author seems like she has it completely together, so. official update although I did do a quick phone one on Monday. Uh, I've been obviously at a lot of work events. Yesterday which was Tuesday we went tree climbing and we climbed up a tree and we did some obstacles to get between trees. My wrists really hurt but the worst part was the mosquito bites. So no one ever tells you that Sweden has mosquitoes but apparently they have a lot and they thought I was one of the tastiest treats out there. So I am covered in mosquito bites. I have about 20 of them and they itch like crazy and they're super swollen so they're very unattractive and I probably can't wear shorts until they're feel healed up. Uh, so reading wise we had the day off work we're having a long weekend so I have Wednesday and Thursday and Friday is a bank holiday and then Monday and Tuesday to devote to writing and reading and also spending some time with my partner and his family. So first of all I have been reading Stephen King's On Writing. I have only 40 pages to go I have been annotating. He does contradict himself a fair bit in this book for example, at one point he says that you should only ever spend three months on a draft, on the first draft, and then reveals that he once spent, I think, 16 months on the road. You have to take his advice with a grain of salt. He also says that anyone, anybody, who is really and truly passionate about writing should be able to spend four to six hours a day reading and writing. And I think that's just not possible for people who have jobs and children. Uh, it's not even possible for me. I mean, I have any two hour commute, an eight hour work day, and then a enforced hour long break. So that is significant length of time more. And although I do read on my commute, and that is how I read so much, I read on my commute, um, even I would struggle to do four to six hours of reading or writing. And not that's not just because I don't enjoy it, it's because I'm tired and I'm a human and I have needs for downtime. But um, I did really enjoy this. It was full of short stories from Stephen King's life and like I said, I only have 40 pages to go so you'll get my full review at the end of the week. Uh, continuing on the non-fiction blurge, I have started listening to The Hidden Life of Trees. I'd forgotten who it was by but there'll be a picture here. There is a lot of information here about the ancient art of forestry. Uh, the author is a forester. He wards a forest somewhere in Germany and I believe first wrote this book in German. He reveals how trees have families and science has backed this up. So they actually, their children are brought up in such a way that means that they are stronger and better suited and if, than if they weren't, you know, didn't have this upbringing. They also have friend trees, they communicate with trees across a wide range of forest through a fungal network. So it's all incredibly interesting and I'm really enjoying listening to the narration. However, it was not as funny as Kevin Hart's Rule of Life, which I reread or re-listened to last week. This is the story of Kevin Hart's life and upbringing and how he found fame and how he worked really hard to find fame. I think one of the biggest takeaways from this book is how hard successful people work to get where they are and how hard they work to continue staying afloat. Um, Kevin Hart is very, makes it very clear that it is absolutely luck that helps you get success. You need luck but you also need to be personable, you need to be humble and you need to work hard and I think he has a bunch more points obviously and you should definitely go and listen to it if you're interested in uh, just nonfiction in general. The book is very funny and I would say the life lessons start around a third of the way in. Before that it's just Kevin Hart's upbringing, uh, but it is very funny. It's a very sweet letter to his mum about how she raised him and how she raised him with the qualities that then helped him succeed in comedy. So I really enjoyed that one. Finally, the Romance-a-thon update. So I have been reading The Rebels of Rayleigh High by Callie Hart. This is a new adult contemporary. It is about 
the main character, there are two main characters, there's Silver and then there's Alex. Alex has just come out of Juvie, I believe, or is possibly going to be sent to Juvie if he puts another foot wrong after doing some pretty terrible things to a guy, digging up his corpse and pissing on it. And uh, Silver is dealing with a fall from grace that was not her fault and kind of like the backlash and bullying that has happened because of that. Now these two are drawn together and they take on the rest of the school through their connection. Kelly Hart is really good at creating side characters that have a lot going on themselves. So there is a lot of stuff going on in the lives of each and every one of these side characters, except for two. And I'm just really enjoying the book. I, it does have some explicit sex scenes. It is a new adult, so that seems to go with the title for now. Hopefully that will calm down itself a little bit. But uh, yeah, it deals with some pretty heavy themes. So trigger warnings for rape, gang rape, and violence against children. I think it's been handled really well so far. I'm really enjoying it. I feel like these two, the only thing I would say is that these two don't really have a chemistry that I see, but I'm not into bad boys, so maybe that's why, or bad boys. Um, but he is a very caring individual and he's, you know, he's got his own goals going on. He definitely is completely understanding of her boundaries and enforces them, so. Yeah, no problems there. He's not like a typical bad boy abuser. He's very much a sweet guy, I guess. Uh, so obviously we have been at the summer house today, uh, which is where all of this beautiful landscape is. And we actually, on the drive here, it thundered and lightninged and rained so hard. I was actually worried that we'd just have to turn around. Like, the road conditions were so bad. But we didn't, we just rode very slowly and we got here in one piece. But while we were stuck in traffic in the rain, uh, I did have to start reading something. And because my current reading, like, I didn't have the books that I'm supposed to be reading for Romanzathon on me, so instead, and there was no internet, so instead I read Behind Blue Eyes, which is my pick for an indie thriller. It's been really good so far. She's got a lot of things about Sweden on point. For example, she met her partner in Thailand for Swedes to go on holiday and things like that. So I'm definitely loving the immigrant experience that she's describing. And obviously there's a dead body and stuff and we're trying to figure out who did it. It's been really well written so far. Obviously there's a couple of typos, but it is in arc from NetGalley, so there will be some typos. And I received this book for free, of course. Other than that, I did pick up Surprise Me for about 15 minutes this morning while I was brushing my teeth, but that's about as far as I am with that one. All right, that is it. We are gonna bed down. It is quite late, as you can see by the sky, and I will talk to you more tomorrow. So today was a Midsummer's Eve, which meant that we went to celebrate Midsummer. I think you've just seen some footage from that. Uh, which was really actually quite good because we, uh, because the book I was reading, Behind Blue Eyes, is actually set during Swedish Midsummer uh, in Stockholm. So that was really cool. I actually finished Behind Blue Eyes this morning. That was a really good thriller. I thought uh, the ending was a bit odd, uh, but I still thought it was really good. And I can't, I don't know how many stars I'm going to give it. You'll have to wait till the wrap up tomorrow. And I also finished. Surprise Me by the same woman, Sophie Kinsella, I think, the same woman who wrote The Undomesticated Goddess. Uh, that one I was less enthused by. I thought it was interesting and fun and entertaining. It was a very quick read. I think I read it in a day or possibly just three hours <laughs> this morning, uh, but it didn't really tackle any hard topics and I thought the ending was very well wrapped. Uh, yeah, that is it for me. I have started reading behind the Green Curtain, which I think is a lesbian uh, forbidden romance between an employee and her boss. And I will let you know if I'm enjoying that tomorrow when I have read more than chapter three. So I'm actually doing this wrap up a day late, so sorry about that. Um, I figured it would be better if I could do it in my own home. Uh, where I have control over the camera angle and stuff, but I hope you enjoyed the snapshots of Swedish countryside life. So this week started off um, with a bang. First, I read The Rebel of Rayleigh High. This is a was way different than I had imagined it based on the blurb. This is about a social outcast who has been bullied because she was sexually assaulted the year before by the most popular guy in school. She has fallen from grace. She used to be one of the cool kids, and now she is barely holding on to life at school. 
Into this picture enters a rebel. He is a motorcyclist who is has been warned that this is his last chance before he has to go to juvenile detention centre, and he is, has to be on his best behaviour in order to prove something to someone that you find out during the course of this book. He doesn't need any trouble. He needs to stay on the straight and narrow. But because this girl is being bullied and ostracised, he feels drawn to her and drawn to protect her, despite the fact that he should really be looking out for himself. This book covers a lot of ground. It covers so much of a mental health spectrum and of horrible things that can happen to a person. I thought this book was so carefully written and well written, and I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I read was On Writing by Stephen King. On Writing is a kind of like memoir of Stephen King's life more than it is a writing guide, although about a third of the book is writing advice. It also includes a lot of short stories and memories from Stephen King, Stephen Kine, from Stephen King's life and how he grew up and why he loves to write. I obviously tabbed, I need to make notes from everything that I've tabbed so that I can take this back to the library tomorrow when it is due back. But I'm really proud of myself for reading this. I actually, at the beginning of the week, thought that this would be the only book I finished during Romance-a-thon, which was not the plan. Uh, but yes, I managed to finish this and I am I really enjoyed it. There were parts where I disagreed with Stephen King, there were parts where I agreed with Stephen King. I'm going to suggest that my opinion is less important than Stephen King's. But overall, I thought this was a fantastic read and I highly urge anyone who's interested in storytelling to pick it up. Chronological order might be a bit uh, in chaos because I'm not very good at breaks in routine. I struggle to get back from them. The next book I believe I read was Surprise Me by Sophie Kinsella. This is a kind of like study of marriage. It is a book about a young couple who have twins and they are they have to do their life insurance and are told that they might in fact live until they are 120 and that means another 50, 60, 80, 70 years of marriage. This causes a massive break in the relationship between the two of them and they decide to surprise each other to kind of keep the juices going. I'm actually surprised that they went with that as the blurb and the title because this book isn't really about the surprises. There are a few surprises in there, but most of the time this is about the main character who is kind of like living in her father's shadow and worships her father. Her father died in a car crash and before he died he did a lot of charity work. He really worked hard on the behalf of charities and fundraising and things like that. A lot of famous people knew him and she feels that she's not as charming as he was. And in fact, no one is as charming as he was, least of all her husband Dan. I thought it was an okay book. It was average. I'd give it a 3 out of 5. It was a kind of like feel-good pool romance. There was nothing particularly meaty in here, uh, but it was a kind of like fun read. Sophie Kinsella has written a lot of books and knows how to turn a phrase at least. So it was very easy writing or reading, I guess. It was a very easy voice to read. In the middle of Surprise Me, I also picked up Behind Blue Eyes. This is not part of Romance-a-thon. This is a murder mystery. A woman has just moved to Sweden with her boyfriend, who she's known all of about six months and she's living in his flat in Stockholm. They're visiting some friends on an island for the weekend and she finds a dead body. Now the body has clearly been dead for over a year, but she finds out that this is her boyfriend's ex who had gone missing the previous year. Luckily, our main character is a reporter, so she is able to pursue a couple of leads and try and figure out whether it was her boyfriend that did it. I thought this book was really well written. It was very much a good look on Swedish life. I've experienced quite a few of these things. I would say that a lot of the Swedes are more friendly than this book portrays them. And yeah, I just thought it was really well written. I did not like the conclusion. I felt that it was a little bit odd and off given the rest of the book, and I think it would have been a lot more powerful had the author made a couple of different choices. However, I did really, really enjoy it, and I gave this book a 3.5, possibly a 4 stars. The final book I picked up this week was Behind the Green Curtain. This I picked up because I thought it was a lesbian or forbidden romance. It's actually more of a smut book. I didn't think it was particularly well written, and the chemistry between the characters was completely off, including some scenes of barely there slash no consent. So I unfortunately had to return this to the Kindle store. I was looking forward to supporting another indie author, but unfortunately I just couldn't get my get into this. Although it was quite a wordy book, I felt that the author could definitely have used an editor, and it was just, yeah, like I said, it ugh, it did not give me a very feel good factor. But that is it for the week. I'm sorry that it's on, ending on such a bummer, but it was a great week. I had a great time on vacation, and I hope you guys are enjoying the summer sun as well. As you can see, I have definitely been touched by it. I hope you guys have found an absolutely great read this week and that you are stuck in. If you have, leave the title and author down in the comments below so I can consider them for bingo. See you next week, kittens.
I just want to say that like we went tree climbing on Tuesday as you know and I was bitten so badly by the midges and the marks are still here on Sunday look at that it looked like I've been grabbed by someone with like some serious finger strength so yeah don't go out to the woods today 